Hey everyone, this is a real quick live for you. So happy St. Patrick's Day. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you didn't let anything get in your way of your enjoyment. We always have the power and choice to create happiness in our lives, no matter what is going on. We're in control, so don't forget that right now. I know it's an easy time to really forget who we are and our power, and that we still have it, even though we can't go outside and do what we desire. We're not living a life that is comfortable right now. It is so uncomfortable, but it's a great time for growth, a great time to plant new seeds. So right now the moon is waning down and we're gonna be entering darkness. And I'm sure it feels like darkness around us right now, but just know it's prime time to start looking at what's not working right now. What can you incorporate? Because the universe likes, likes to have some balance to it. So if we're going to let go of something, we have to incorporate something. Or if we're going to incorporate something, we have to be ready to release something that is not suiting us anymore. Because without that balance, then we don't see change that sticks. We have to really try to figure out what do we need to let go of and what do we need to add to our lives. So a goddess that I've been working with since we have the, so next week is going to be the new moon. And with the new moon, I like to work with dark goddesses. So since last week, I've been working with Morgan. So she is an intense goddess to work with. She is brutally honest. She is like any close friend that you have that won't bullshit you. Morgan will not bullshit you at all. I honestly was judging her in the beginning. It was like working with Callie. Working with dark goddesses is intimidating. It really is. So Morgan told me that judgment gets in the way of our connection with the divine. It's the belief a message can come from the divine one way and that's it. So you're looking for things to work out for you just the way that they worked out for everyone else. Because in your mind, there's a formula that unless it works out this way, then I'm not having my own experience here. We have this idea that our experience is a shared experience of how it always will be and always has been. But we have to be open to letting go of control and letting things come, letting things flow. And I know that's really hard to do, but just know that things will come to you as they are meant to, even messages from the divine, your divine connection of any sort that you have. That one size does not fit all. And it was intense because she revealed to me how I have the workaholic thing going on, even though I may not be working, working, but I have this need to fill my time. It's a root chakra issue where I just need, I just need to be occupied. I just need to seem invisible by having so much going on. It's just, you know, you're being good. You're behaving as you should, it feels like, when you're doing all this noise and you're just filling up your time. And it, you know, filling up our time is also a way to try to be distracted from our own issues try to run away from things by being busy. We have to ask, is busy really productive? Is being on all the time, never going off, like always being go, 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 really productive? Is it? It's a really hard thing to explore. When you take a moment, people really see who you are and that can be scary too. To shut off and let people see who you are and what you're feeling and that you're far more than your job. It's like fight club. Like you're not your job, you're not your money, you're not what's in your wallet. It's that whole idea that you're far more than that. That can be scary because there can be rejection. And maybe early on you dealt with rejection so now you stay busy, busy, busy because you're living up to this societal idea that being who you are is your job, being who you are is your wallet. It's that idea. And that's why I feel like um, coronavirus, this whole thing, the way it's going right now is challenging us to look at who we are and that there is far more value than our jobs. There's far more value than all these other things that we identify with. You are so much more than any of that. Those are not your value. Now it's trying to discover what is my value? What will I do with my time? Because when I worked with Goddess Morgan, she showed me that I'm already dead because I'm not living for myself. I'm not prioritizing myself. So are you prioritizing what makes you feel alive? Or are you already dead right now? What are you doing with your time? We have to really look at that. Hi, Kala and hi, Lee. Thank you for watching. 
So I have some other things that I received from her. I did some inner child work that was intense. Um, my inner child is just like, slow down. I just want to just be for a moment. I am so sick of being turned on all the time, always functioning, always trying to figure things out of how to survive, how to be what everyone else wants me to be. Why can't I just shut off for a moment, do nothing, and not have it be an issue? Because when I was a kid, I couldn't do that. So now it's a time of me in trying to figure out what do I need to let go of? Obviously, I can't be busy all the time. I can't be on all the time. And I have to be willing to incorporate being off. And that being off doesn't identify me as having less value. Being off doesn't mean I'm a bad mom. Being off doesn't mean I'm a bad wife. Being off doesn't make me a bad worker when I want to take a moment and just breathe. It doesn't make me a bad person at all, needing to rest. Because rest can sometimes be where all the answers come from. So this time right now, don't be hard on yourself. Know that you might get some really interesting answers about the direction that you should be taking right now or that you want to take. Let's not use should, but really listen to yourself. Hear yourself. I know there's a lot of time to hear yourself within. Take it. Listen. You know what's best for you more than anyone else. And yet we look around for, am I doing it right? Do you like me now? What about this? Like, will you love me now because I have a job and I have a car and all these things? Like, how about now? Am I worthy now? How about now? What about this? Now I have a game system and now I have this house and this motorcycle and all these other things. Like, will someone love me now? And we have to cut that crap out. We really need to. This is the perfect time to discover what makes you amazing, what brings in your tribe, what brings you actual love. So let's take that time and hear, hear ourselves. Whatever lights you up about yourself, really see what that is. And know that that will bring in your tribe. That will bring in love for you. I know it's cheesy, but it's the whole true love within brings true love throughout you, for you. So since the moon is waning down, and I know if you're a hairstylist, anyone here watching, this is the perfect time for people to dye their hair. It sticks better. This is a good time for surgery. And um, it's a time of releasing bad habits, as I said, and toxic relationships. So maybe it is good to not be around people because now we can really think about, is this person really good to be around for me or is it not suiting me? It's a good time to look at that and reflect. So a good thing to do for this, I'm a little ahead of myself because I, um, I set up my, my new moon circle ahead. So I was going to read for the um, balsamic moon. So this is a little bit ahead. You can save this for more towards the weekend to do. So if you're thinking about releasing a toxic relationship, you can write down the name of the person and burn it. Release from your mind and womb is another thing that we have to do. And yes, men can do this too because we hold relationships there. We hold anything close to us there. So we have to picture um, release energetically from ourselves, mentally, physically, and emotionally. And there's also, um, as the moon is waning down, that's a good time to lose weight. I'm going to add in some links for these different things that I'm talking about right now. And she also showed me um, carnelian. Carnelian is an amazing gemstone you can work with. Even Adele uses it. It's called the artist stone. So if you're an artist, this is definitely the stone for you. I'm adding a link right now for it. It might take a bit of time. I know there's some time lapse here going on when I do a live. It is a stone for confidence. It is for your sacral chakra. It also aligns your three um, your three lower chakras. So your solar plexus we're talking about, your sacral and your root chakra. It's definitely one I can't wait to work with. It helps with um, your sexual energy too. It's um, creativity. As we said, it's an artist thing. Facing your fears. If you're doing public speaking, you wanna work with the stone too, the, the carnelian stone. And I found it really interesting with doing the Akashic Records stuff that anytime that a stone comes to me, it actually has to do with a past life thing. So this is another stone that was used in the Middle Ages. It was used in Egypt. It was used by high priestess, the Carnelian Stone. So if you have any past lives that you know of that have to do with these time periods, that might be really good for you too. It can bring out the childlike playfulness that you need and the spontaneity, the warm, sunny vibes. So I added a link there if you just join in and you can see all about the carnelian um, stone. There's a meditation in this link too that you can do. 
It's, um, so yeah, it helps out with a lot of different things. It's linked to rose quartz as well, as it says here, the vibration of love it helps you with. It boosts courage, self-confidence. On, on a cellular level, it purifies the blood and improves circulation. It's a must-have for any stressful situation, like right now. Like It seems like the perfect stone to come in and, and be known to me. I didn't know what carnelian was, and then I Googled it, and I was like, oh, wow, it's a stone. Like I was not expecting that at all. So there's a lot of interesting history here, of course, because I'm looking for it right now. I'm not going to find it. But if you do more research on the stone, I'll definitely add a link because it's not the link that shows all the history about it. But it's it's really awesome. Like even the builders from Egypt were using this stone and it it gave their identity as who they were. And um, I'm trying to remember, there were some people that, some famous people too, it's linked to, besides Adele, there were some historical people that would use it to help them with confidence. Oh, now I remember. It was um, Napoleon actually used it. Interesting stuff. So it talks about goddess Morgan a bit here, and she's a triple goddess. She's associated with crows, and she's associated also um, with ravens. As I said, she was intense to work with, so if you didn't get to watch parts of this, definitely go back to it. I'm going to link some more information for you. This is on Morgan. I do recommend working with her if you join my group. I will add a link for that too. We're going to be doing some work with Morgan. I'm probably going to move that to the actual, um, the actual date for the new moon since I'm not working right now. So I can do an actual new moon circle. I am also going to be having the full moon circle still. So I'll have information on that and how to get tickets and everything too. That'll be up for you as well. I'm deciding right now still if I want to keep it April 1st or since I'm open right now, I can switch the date for that too. And I can have that a week later on the actual date, which would be April 7th, I believe. I will double check. Don't quote me right now. So don't quote me. <laughs> but thank you so much for watching. I'm going to add some more information here for you for some things in case you want to read up on them. There's definitely a lot that's happening right now. And just trust yourself. Take, some, take this time for yourself that you have. It is time to rest. It is time to look within and see what is and isn't working. And maybe, hey, maybe your job isn't working for you at all. That is something to take in. I know it's hard. But maybe there is something better out there and something that you will love. I mean, it's a great time to, to spend time with family and see what really matters to me that society isn't telling me matters for me and to create time for whatever it is that you truly love. So thank you all for watching. So hey, Glenn. Hey, Astara. Hey, Keith. Hey, Albert. And hey, Nicole. And if any of these aren't your actual name you want to be called, just let me know next time. So love all of you. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll link my how to book with me and all that. So, and follow me on, on TikTok. I'm under first generation healers.